do. Easy mind, easy life. Okay, now, for those who don't know the story of the hat, <laughs> I just remember before I started doing these videos um, five years ago, before I started this YouTube channel, I was given this beautiful hat one one day. I think it was for Mother's Day because Mother's Day goes into the winter. And I loved it so much. I was wearing it that whole winter. And what I found amazing about this this beautiful hat, and it's got this lovely little tip here. See, so it goes on. Because you can't you don't get the full effect of the hat while you're here, but it's just so cute. <laughs> I found that everywhere I went where I wore this hat, everybody would smile at me because it's so goofy looking, right? <laughs> Just so cute. And um, people would look at the hat and instantly smile at me. And I thought, oh, it made people so happy that when I started the YouTube videos, I thought, I'm going to wear that hat, right? <laughs> because if nothing else, at least it would cheer someone up, right? My goofy hat. So that is the story of my hat. It just, it makes people feel happy. It's pretty cute too. But yeah, I like the goofiness of it, especially this long bit at the back. It just, yeah. I don't know, I feel like an elf sometimes in this thing, you know? <laughs> I love it. So I always wear it in the videos. It's kind of become my thing now that easy mind, easy life. And the hat just go hand in hand. Yeah, that was. Anyway, talking about. Um, the anger, the sadness, and the fear, right? Stuff comes up all the time, right? And you think, oh, what's this about? You know, recently, I mean, even just recently, I have stuff coming up all the time, right? And I remember having this conversation with my mother-in-law and she was going on about education and, you know, going to university and getting a degree. And I grew up with that being shoved down my throat, right? Um, my parents didn't get to go to school at all. They had to start working at quite a young age. I think my mum by 10, by about the age of 10 was already working. And my dad probably before that because they were on a farm. So as soon as they were old enough, they were sent out to help out, you know, with the chores on the farm. So neither of them got to, I think mum got to grade four of school and dad might have got to grade six. He got to finish at least primary school. But that was all they could do because they needed them to work, right? They were so poor, they couldn't afford to be wasting time at school in those days. So to them, they had this really strong belief, right? That education was so important and going to university and getting a degree was the be all and end all because if you had that, you were set for life, right? Financially, you would never have any problems with money. Um, th that was their belief, right? And even just till recently, my mum was going on about, oh, I should have made you finish university. I should have never let you drop out and blah, blah. Um, I was in my third year of chemistry in university and I remember sitting there one day thinking, why am I doing this, right? Why, why am I doing this? It's not something I wanna do for the rest of my life. Why am I sitting here? Why am I completing this course at all? And I realized as I'm sitting there, that I was doing it for everyone else except for me, right? I was doing it to keep my mum happy. I was doing it to keep my partner at the time happy because he was you know, studying to get a degree. And overseas, you know, in South America, especially people with degrees don't marry people that don't have one, right? It's like marrying the help, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so that's their mentality over there. People with degrees marry people with degrees. And I remember thinking, well, I don't want to be married to someone just because I have a title, right? It doesn't mean anything to me, right? It didn't mean anything whether I had this title or I didn't have this title because it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I knew that in my heart. It wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, chemistry. Uh, and the reason I chose chemistry was because it was one of the hardest careers to do, right? You had to be a real brainiac to complete this. So I thought, oh, then I get to prove how smart I am, right? That was the whole point. And nothing to do with, oh, this is my passion. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. No, none of that. And I realized that one day in class. And um, I was in the middle of my third year and I just got my stuff. I picked, packed up and I just walked out in the middle of this lesson. And I thought, that's it, I'm done, right? Next day, I went out into the city and I found a job teaching English because that's what I knew how to do in those days. I was in a place where they sp spoke Spanish and they had special English schools and I went and did that. And, uh, and they just couldn't convince me to go back, right? 
my mum, she couldn't convince me. I was like, I don't want to do it. I do, and I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to go to another university. I don't need a title. I couldn't make them understand that I didn't want to be defined by this title. I didn't need it. I didn't want it, right? <laughs> so, you know, that was their belief. But it didn't have to be mine. It wasn't mine. I didn't believe that, right? And so uh, up until recently, whenever my mum mentioned, you know, this university title that I should have made you finish, or even recently with my daughter, she doesn't like school. She's like the total opposite of me. She doesn't like learning. She doesn't like reading. She doesn't like school. And I have to respect that, right? She's not me. She's her own person, right? And she has come with her own gifts. I can't force her to be something she's not. So I remember this one day, you know, with my mother-in-law and she was going on about school with her, with my daughter, because um, she doesn't like reading and she's falling behind with her reading, you know, all this stuff. And she was carrying on and on and on, right, about her and about her going to uni and about her getting a degree and blah, blah. And I thought, oh, you know, why is everything, why does everything revolve about, you know, around this going to university and having a title, you know, why is, why is that the be all and end all in this world, right? And why does that topic keep coming up? More importantly was why does it keep coming up? Because every time it did, it made me angry, right? And then one day, it was only recently, I realized why it made me angry. And this is what happened. When I was young, and I remember in the previous videos I told you I loved learning, right? And I would just find, I, I would always be in a book. My nose was always stuck in a book, engrossed, trying to learn something. And that was from really little, right? From the youngest age that I can remember, I was always reading. And then what happened was in grade three of school, um, I came fourth in my class. Because in those days they used to grade you, like rank you in your class. I don't know if they still do that now, but they did. And I was fourth in my class. And in the parent-teacher thing, the, you know, when the parents go in to speak to the teachers, the teacher said to my mum that I didn't come first because I never handed in any homework. Right? I didn't do any homework. And... But I came forth, right, without that effort, right? You know, I keep thinking about that, but I came forth. It's not like I came last in the class and I'm, you know, dragging my butt behind. Anyway, but to them it was like they never had the opportunity and they didn't want me to waste the opportunity, right, that I, I could go to school and I could learn and I could do something with my life, right? <laughs> so what happened then is they put me into a Catholic school, right? Straight away, no question. She just dumped me into this Catholic school. And the Catholic school was all about the devil, you know, and instilling this fear in children, you know? It was all about the devil and the devil's watching and the devil's going to take your soul. And, you know, I think by about the third month, I would wake up crying and go to sleep crying because I knew I had to go back to this school the next day. I just hated being there. And um, because it wasn't about the learning, it was just about instilling fear, you know, in children. So I think I was there for that year, probably not much more than the year as far as I can remember, because by year five, I was back to the other school where I started, the, the public school I was in originally. But my, what I realized recently because after that, it was all about keeping my mum happy. I had to get the highest grades. I had to be the best in my class. I had to be, firstly, because I could, right? I had the ability to do that, but it was more for her, right? And so she took away something that I loved doing with that. That's, that's the reality. That's what I realized recently. I loved learning already. You know, I already had that love for it. And then it, turned into a chore because I had to do it for her to keep her happy you know I had to be the best in my class I had to have the top grades and so that was my anger it wasn't it didn't have to do with university and it didn't have to do with the title it, it wasn't all about that it was about the fact that I loved learning and that love was taken away you know it was destroyed with that year in Catholic school because then it was just about the fear that I was going to be sent back there. I knew that if I didn't perform like a little circus monkey and keep them happy, you know, I would be sent back there.
but it took away my joy of learning because it was no longer about what I could learn. It wasn't the love of learning anymore. You know, it was just about keeping her happy. And that was my anger. See, and that's why anger comes up because always always underneath that anger or that fear or that sadness is a message of something that you've buried down deep you know something that's in there it's in your heart that wants to come out so yeah always when it comes up ask what is it that you're trying to show me what is it that i've hidden here what's hiding what is it that i've put there forgotten about because I just buried it so deep you know <laughs> and forgotten that that was what happened you know something I loved so dearly was taken away from me and turned into something else you know so always when there's anger there's sadness there's pain ask what is it that you're trying to show me because that's why they show up because there's something there that we're holding on to. We've attached to it. You know, recently I had this vision that we're like this octopus, but instead of just having the eight tentacles, we've got like hundreds of tentacles and they're all attached to all these different moments in the past, attached. And because they're still attached, is that the anger comes up or the fear comes up or the the sadness you know you feel that pain again and again and again it's because we're still attached we haven't let it go we haven't you know released it so hopefully today there's something that you can look at and really think about why do I get angry about that or why does that make me sad or why does that make me afraid why am I afraid when that comes up or when that happens what is that trying to show me? All right, my darling, I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.